In my house, I have a lot of sort of measuring things because that's one aspect of science. People think science is what you know. Science is measurement. It's measurement. That's the source of knowledge. So I have thermometers all over and measuring tapes and things. So one of them is an instant read thermometer in the kitchen. So my son was like seven and I'm preparing a pot of water for spaghetti. And I said, Travis, you know, go check to see the temperature of the water. I want to know. So he goes and gets the thermometer, puts it in. Now he's got to read. It's one of these sort of dial thermometers. He's got to read what's between 70 and 80. Well, that must be like 75. It's old fashioned. Oh, old fashioned, right, right. No, you don't have numbers just come at you. No you digital on this. Figure house. this one out. Right. Okay? So I said, thank you, Travis. And 10 minutes go by. Could you check again? He sees this at 90 degrees. Could you check again? 120. 150. Keeps going back. Now it's a little project, right? He's doing this. He's helping me learn this. Gets to 200. I said, well, is it boiling yet? No, still not boiling. Okay, I need to know when it's going to boil. So he goes back five minutes later. Is it boiling yet? I said, yes, it is. Okay, so I said, check the temperature. It says, it's just, it's not, it's a little bit above 210. I said, well, can you tell me? Get, it's that one, it's a one, that, so it's, maybe it's 212, I think? Okay, fine, come on back. So I let the water keep boiling. I said, check it again. 10 minutes later, he goes back. Is it hotter? No. It's still 212. So I said, wow, okay. All right, that's cool. Well, we're gonna put the spaghetti in now. I don't explain anything. That's not the point here. The point is he experimented and noticed that temperature on water will raise it until it hits boiling, and then it stays there. Maybe I'll get back to it later, but I just wanted that okay. measurement to be in him somewhere. And this measurement forces them to ask questions of others. So my daughter, for example, who's a, who's a big fan of Hannah Montana. So I told her, I said, Miranda, I just saw a poster of Hannah Montana. It was like as big as a wall. She said, well, how big was the wall? So that's this, that's, let me not call that skepticism, but let me call that not content with incomplete information, which I would submit as the consequence of always taking measurements of the world around you. So I had to say, oh, okay, well, the wall was like, it was this big and not this big. And I'm submitting to you that it's, that's the brain wiring that I'm looking for and that, that I'm after. So you asked, what do you, how, do you, how do you stay interested in science? I think um, you get out of their way and you, you nurture it. You don't try to prevent it. And when my daughter was, well, she was still in a high chair and she spilled milk on the table. We're trying to get her to wean her from a sippy cup to a cup with an open top. So kids barely have any coordination at this point. She's trying, but she tipped it over and it rolled across the table. I don't know about your floors, but ours are like slightly not level, right? So the water rolls. This is the east side, so you got really level stuff over here. <laughs> West side stuff is anything. Anyway. So, um, so the, the milk went between the eaves of the table and it didn't cross the eave and go to the other eave. Right. That's kind of interesting. It just disappeared. So she then, leaned over and saw it drip down. Mm -hmm. So I came back behind her and I cleaned it up, put more milk in it. Then she accidentally knocked it over again <laughs> and checked it out again. I think most parents would have said, you're wasting milk, stop that, and cleaned it up and prevented the, but I view that as an experiment in fluid dynamics. And milk is cheap, so. And the cost of that milk, while you're saying, well, you're wasting food, first, at least in America, there's no shortage of food, first of all. So let's just remember that, okay? Yes, if you came from like the depression and the Holocaust, and you have all this memory where food was really scarce, I, I can't fault you for resisting wasting food. However, there is no shortage of food. And if the act of the food doing this brings a lesson plan along with it, that is cheap compared with the actual cost of education out there. In fact, the president of Harvard is once, the former president, uh, Derek Bach, quoted as once saying, if you think the cost, because people said, why does Harvard cost so much? If you think the cost of education is, exp is expensive, try the cost of ignorance. Mm. All right. So, uh, I'd, so what was it? It was, couldn't have been more than 40 cents worth of milk. You don't even bend down and pick that up in the street. No. And there's a whole lesson plan. So, so you're doing so, more? so this research I'm doing is it's yeah. about how much of a mess you can make it with your house. And 
then you have kids who are, who are ready for the world. And they'll help you out doing that, uh, making that mess. And one other, I got to add, one yeah. other thing. One other thing. Someone said, um, you know, what do you do to teach kids? You know, they see me and they, they say, uh, what more can you do to help kids get interested in science? It turns out there is nothing that I do that's ever directed towards kids. There are kids who can do it, who can read what I write. Right. This, this, this is very readable by practically any age. But I don't target kids. I always target adults. Always. They say, well, why don't you spend time with kids? Because kids are not the problem. I want scientifically literate adults out there because adults vote. And it's, it's, it's not the kids who are saying, what's my horoscope today? Young enough kids? They don't ask about horoscopes. They don't. Kids don't ask. If, you, if you're like 12 and under, they're not asking, will the world really end in 2012? They're not asking that. They're not. They're asking real questions. Like, wh how come there are no dinosaurs? And what's, why is there a flower? And why, why is the, how can the worm breathe under the rock? Those are the kind of questions they're asking. Yeah. So the, the kids are not the problem. It's the adults. We need more scientifically literate adults.